the Eve of Green Ushla, Taw Falcher Riff Cock and you, the No Heart Special of the Show in Old Skull Limley, Kundilimni in Aaron. Hello to everybody, and you are most welcome to our graduation ceremony here today at the University of Limerick on the banks of the River Shannon, Ireland. It is a wonderful day that we have planned for you, and I hope that you, your friends and your family get to enjoy this special time as the university awards you for your endeavour and achievement during the course of your studies with us here at the University of Limerick. Take this time to relax and enjoy and breathe in the significance of your achievement and note that this achievement is something that will always stay with you and that you will be able to reflect back on in years to come as you recount the journey of your time here at the University of Limerick, the times where you put in great effort to achieve your goals, to work with your lecturers and tutors and professional staff in order to realise the dreams that you came to us with on the first day of your journey. I hope that this special occasion for you, your family and your friends is all that it can be at this time and that you will go on to celebrate even when this ceremony is over. Cogordicus live Galair. Graduands, as Provost and Deputy President, it's my great honour to welcome you all to this online conferring ceremony at the University of Limerick. For UL, graduation ceremonies are the highlight of the academic calendar. It's the opportunity to come together to celebrate our students' hard work and perseverance, as well as their academic success. Graduation is a day to be celebrated with your family and friends, to recognise your academic achievements and the end of your studies. We hope that you'll be able to mark this milestone in a special way with your loved ones. For some of you, it will be the start of another journey, either into the workforce as a UL graduate or onto further education, where you'll build upon the educational foundations you received at UL. On behalf of everyone here at UL, I offer you our warmest congratulations to each and every one of you, and we wish you every success in the next stage of your journey. This year, due to the pandemic, we are graduating the class of 2021 in online ceremonies. We hope you will enjoy this special occasion. The full ceremony will last about 45 minutes. At the end of the ceremony, UL students from the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance will close the event with a spectacular display. Before we begin the formal part of this online ceremony, Professor Shane Kilcummins, the Executive Dean for the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, will explain to us the significance of the academic dress and the use of the mace at ceremonial events. Hello and welcome to this UL online conferring ceremony. My role today is to say a few words on the significance of the academic robes worn by our academic staff and the graduates. The origins of academic attire date back to the 12th century, when universities were beginning to emerge. At that time, the dress of the scholar, both student and teacher, was that of the monk. The academic gown can be traced back to the Council of Oxford in 1222, where the local bishop decreed that all clergy should wear a closed flowing gown. Both Oxford and Cambridge adopted this practice and continued it even when the clerical attire changed. In 1895, formal standards were agreed for American universities which continue to this day. There, the colour used is indicative of the subject to which the degree pertains. This same uniformity does not apply here in Ireland and you will find it very difficult to identify a pattern or consistency. The hood was originally intended to serve as a cover for the tonsured head of the cleric. 
Caps came to be used later. You will notice that some academics wear caps while others do not, depending on the custom at the university at which the degree was conferred. In medieval times, the mace was a weapon of war and was a heavy staff or club made from metal and was originally used for breaking armour. In 13th century France, the mace was carried up by the monarch's bodyguard and began to acquire a ceremonial function as a symbol of secular power. At a live ceremony, parchments would be presented across the university mace to the graduating students by the president. Today, the UL mace will be placed on the table in front of our president to maintain its significance for use in acknowledging your academic achievement. I hope that you enjoy the ceremony and can celebrate your success with your families at home. Thank you. I now call on Professor Kirsten May, President, to officially start proceedings and to deliver her conferring address. Members of governing authority, members of academic council, parents, partners and families, graduates of the class 2021, colleagues, a meeting of the university is hereby convened for the purpose of conferring academic awards. Exercising the power granted to the University of Limerick by Orachtas Ehren, I hereby confer degrees of the university on the graduates from the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. Graduates, welcome, dear Yves. As I begin today, I will offer you the warmest of congratulations on completing this hugely important part of your learning journey. I also decided to begin today by looking at UL from the outside, as somewhat of an island, but that is where I paused, as there is no doubt we are part of a much bigger community, a strong local and international family that helps us to have an outward perspective and helps us to enhance and develop the way we educate our young leaders of tomorrow. We know that the last 17 months have disrupted our lives, our work, our education and research, and indeed our families, kinships and friends. Amid that disruptions, we are emerging from those clutches through research, advances in medicine, but most of all through the solidarity and determination of our communities. Speaking of emerging, today you are completing this, your chosen journey through higher education. For some of you, your steps on this pathway of formal education will end here and you will become competent and dynamic members of the workforce. For others, you will stay on this path of knowledge exchange and take your studies onwards. Nonetheless, and whatever path you have chosen, your success is hard-earned, highly valued and above all a credit to you and your entire support network. No one gets to graduate without a great deal of hard work, commitment and some degree of self-sacrifice. Today, we need to thank your tutors, who work with such passion and commitment to educate the decision makers of tomorrow. We must thank your parents, guardians and your family who stand behind you, offering the support that cannot be measured. Thank your friends who stand by your side and for just being there. And thank yourself for having the perseverance to see this expedition in the search of knowledge, insights and understanding through to the end. You have shown resilience throughout your journey and at the most challenging time, education has shown to be resilient also. However, we must learn from this pandemic and how change was foisted upon us. We must transform education and we must do it so that it remains resilient and meets the challenges of tomorrow. COVID-19 has served as a reset button. There are opportunities. Key elements of our higher education system needed to become more agile and permeable throughout the human lifespan. Needs to be flexible and adaptable between online, remote and face-to-face -face context. We must learn from the transitions of education and research undergone during the pandemic and build on these. However, any transformation or reimagining of university education has to go hand in glove with the reform of its funding model and an enhancement of its investment into its research infrastructure, capacity and capabilities. 
addressing both the exponential speed in which knowledge and competencies demands evolve, we need to enhance access to education and enable formal and informal learning opportunities re- and upskilling throughout the human life cycle and not just at its beginning. Closing the gap between established educational models and agendas on the one hand and learners and societal needs on the other will not only ensure the global competitiveness of the Irish economy, it is vital for furthering and safeguarding social inclusion and cohesion and for the thriving of our communities. Considerations for the future of education have to focus on growing a sense of interrelatedness between individuals and the community, between the local and the global, and importantly, they have to support the move beyond unsustainable economic growth models and further regenerative approaches to halt climate change and address the planetary health. As I mentioned before, we are part of a local and international community. You have an opportunity to be part of that future of education, both directly and indirectly. Since its foundation, UL has evolved from a regional institution to a national university with growing European and global reach through excellence in research and education. We have you, our alumni, who are the much sought after graduates that industry so desires and engage citizen society needs. Armed with a valuable award, you can help shape the ways of tomorrow, answer the biggest challenges we face and strive to the greater heights we desire. Challenges such as climate change and regenerating the planet and the oceans is going to require the ensemble of sciences, all of them, the advancements of innovative technology, collaboration across disciplines, sectors and nations. Above all, it requires talent with intellectual passion, critical engagement and emotional intelligence, judgment and empathy. You are entering into that world as our ambassadors and we are so proud of you. Graduates, you have prevailed during a unique moment in history and your graduation marks a significant milestone on your personal journey of growth, on your quest to fulfill your goals and nurture your aspirations. I hope you will look back fondly on your time at UL in Limerick and as part of a community of scholars. Our post-pandemic societal rejuvenation will be supported by the addition of people like you, bringing your skills, creativity and commitment into the community. We will continue to look for support from all levels of society, from government, from our industry partners and from our communities. We will continue to strive and thrive so that we do compete internationally and continue to explore and exploit the imposed changes for the better. Our higher education institutes protect the value of academic achievements proudly and fiercely by ensuring that our governance of your educational journey reaches the highest international standards. The importance of our sector has been highlighted because of this pandemic. Science and the relevance of educational engagement and global research activities is how we overcome adversities such as this current pandemic. Therefore, we continue to stand firm against any dilutions of educational standards to ensure that you can use your degree confidently and proudly in the knowledge that it is an unquestionable statement of ability, academic integrity and attainment. Today, you join a global community of the best alumni from Limerick, people who contribute to and make a difference to the lives of individuals, communities and nations on a daily basis. Cherish the knowledge and truths you have gained, keep adding to it and remember that you are now alumni of this institution. You are inextricably linked and we urge you to stay in touch as you go out into the world for the next exciting chapter of your lives. To finish, I will offer you this. As we look forward to the rest of the year and 2022 with growing optimism, remember this. Patient, determination and hard work will always bring success. And now you are equipped with the skill set and the tools to achieve success and overcome challenges. While we face challenges, we need to be cognizant of our own self-worth, our growth and our potential to achieve. Savor the short-term success, but be mindful of your long-term fulfillment and all the while think carefully about your priorities. I will close by wishing you all the very best for your new adventures in the knowledge that when life does become uncertain, you will always find comfort and sustenance from the achievement of your graduation. Feel tall, 
be proud, savor and relish your achievement. Congratulations and well done. Thank you very much. I am now pleased to call on Professor Shane Kilcummins, Executive Dean, Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, to make his address of welcome and to present the candidates for conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate programmes. Graduates, family, friends and colleagues, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this autumn conferring ceremony. The synthesising impulse underpinning the diversity of subjects and disciplines in the faculty is a concern with humanity and citizenship, what people and societies value and how they live, communicate, experience themselves and their surroundings, govern their relations and make ethical decisions and choices. The richness of scholarship in our disciplines has helped you to express creatively, to think critically, to reason, to raise questions, to communicate with clarity, to engage empathically and to understand diversity and dimensions of difference. These are skills that are vital in our institutions, economies, work environments and communities. They connect people, celebrate our cultures, foster creative and ethical thinking, challenge orthodoxy and sustain and reimagine our future. This is a day of celebration for you, for your families and friends and for the faculty here in UL who supported your work. It is a day of real significance in your life's journey, the award of a degree from the University of Limerick. It also marks an important staging post. You are now valued as a thinker with all of the potential that offers. Educators, performers, managers, entrepreneurs, writers, lawyers, sociologists, journalists, politicians, linguists and leaders. The potential for good is manifest across all your disciplines. Lawyers, for example, can ensure justice. Our journalism graduates can speak truth to power. Our graduates in music, song and dance have the power to bring beauty and healing. Educators bring light. Linguists emphasise interhuman identification across cultures. Historians create linkages between past and present, an essential good in understanding the condition of being human. Creative writing helps you and us to preserve our humanity. And those with expertise in governance understand the use of power and how decisions are made that impact on wider society. I have witnessed many graduations over the years. I have been trying to think of some guiding principles which I have learned often from my own mistakes and which now may be of interest to you or of use to you. So indulge me for a few moments whilst I impart these four personal insights and lessons. Lesson one, hard work works and talent is overrated. The logic of success in any sphere of life is grounded in hard work. There are no quick or easy paths, no pills or purchases that will soften the requirement. Natural talent is a gift, but it is sometimes outside your control. A work ethic, in contrast, is entirely within your control. You can decide to have a hard work mindset. Arnold Palmer, the brilliant golfer, put it well when he said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Identify with a strong work ethic, not with the label of a particular talent. A work ethic is sustainable and can be lifelong. Talent may be ephemeral and may restrict you if not managed properly. Lesson two, be humble and treat people as ends, not as a means to an end. Recognize the intrinsic value of each human being. You are no better than anyone else, but you, like everyone else, also have huge potential for greatness. Once you recognize that, you can use it as a through line for your own life. I have sometimes heard the quote, be nice to people on the way up because you might meet them again on the way down. But that breaches Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, that people are ends in themselves and never a means to an end. Be nice to people because of their intrinsic worth regardless of their station or your station. Be of service to people. Help them excel. Think of the acronym HOPE, H-O-P-E. Help other people excel. Once you do that, you are moving yourself and others towards accomplishment and greatness. As Harry Truman reminds us, it is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. Lesson three, be resilient. Life throws all sorts of challenges, failures, defeats, and sickening blows at us. Some will be expected, some will come out of the blue. These setbacks are very much part of living. It is my firm belief, however, that the person who refuses to give up, who keeps dusting himself or herself down time after time following failure and defeat, has the most competitive advantage of all. Samuel Beckett put it well when he said, 
ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. Keep failing better in your lives. Keep striving for greatness. Expect failure and develop the resilience and the fortitude to deal with it as it arises. Lesson four, have courage. Where possible, try to step outside your comfort zone. This is where the real personal and professional growth will be. Stepping outside your comfort zone is very difficult. It is, by its very nature, uncomfortable. We are all vulnerable, and it is hard for us to step across our shadows, to stretch ourselves in open and public settings. It is, however, important to have this growth mindset, to strive to be the best version of yourself. I will finish with my favorite passage from a lecture by Theodore Roosevelt on April the 23rd, 1910. It was entitled Citizenship in a Republic. It is of its time and uses gendered language, but the message is very powerful. It reads as follows. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place will never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. So where you can, and when you can, dare greatly. That is the extent of my guidance to you. Work hard, be humble, be resilient, and dare greatly. All that is left for me now to do is to congratulate you on your achievements and successes to date. Thank you for attending this beautiful and great university. My hope for you now is that you create good lives for yourselves and those around you. I wish you every success in your future endeavors. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Therefore, I present the candidates and request you to confer the awards on them. The Assistant Dean Academic Affairs, Dr. Scott Fitzsimons, will now call the candidates in each award category and in alphabetical order. Bachelor of Arts. Finbar McGavin, Aina Mackey, Alva Maddock, Jordan Madigan, Jade Maggie Kennedy, Cormac Maher, Kira Malone, Rebecca Manifold, Alan Mannion, Sean Mannion, Gavin Marinan, Dylan Mason, Rebecca Monsell, Charlene Maudsley, Aoife McAllendon, Sirka McAuliffe, Neve McBrearty, Daniel McCarthy, Danielle McCarthy, David McCarthy, Marissa McCarthy, Siobhan McCormick, Rachel McDonough, Aoife McDonald, Ashling McGee, Aoife McHugh, Ellen McKeown, Orla McLaughlin, Rachel McLaughlin, Aidan McNamara, Connor McNamara, Connor Marr, Nicole Marr, Alana Megan, Caroline Mitchell, Amy Malloy, Donna Moore, Sarah Morin, Deirdre Maroney, Jake Morris, Cahal Moylet, Sean Mulkern, Jack Mullane, Owen Mulligan, Sophie Mullins, Charlie Maloney, Garode Mernan, Richard Murphy, Zoe Murray, Jane Myers, Aoife Nash, Amber Navin, Brenda Nee Clottertig, Shane Nihill, Tamara Nolan, Aoife Therese Noonan, Cornelia Nowak, Robin Nugent, Jack Oates, Aoife O'Brien, Alice O'Brien, Kieran O'Brien, Neve O'Brien, Ellen O'Connell, Maeve O'Connell, Ashling O'Connor, Rory O'Connor, Charlotte O'Donnell, 
Jordan O'Donohue, Quiva O'Dwyer, Alan O'Farrell, Shauna O'Flaherty, Jared O'Gorman, Kira O'Grady, Emily O'Grady, Laura O'Keefe, Sarah O'Leary, Joseph O'Neill, Grace O'Regan, Fianna O'Reilly, Jennifer O'Reilly, Natasha O'Reardon, Michael O'Sullivan, Connor Owens, Ami Oyesola, Farouz Pasilar, Molly Patterson, Sophia Pepper, Vladin Petkovic, Christina Poter, Shauna Power, Lauren Power Whelan, Daniel Quilter, Helen Quinlan, Callan Quinn, Alexandra Quinn O'Sullivan, Isolde Kirante, Katie Rafferty, Katie Raggett, Patrick Ray, David Reed, Chloe Reedy, Roisin Riley, Alan Roach, Ian Roach, Shannon Roach, Aoife Ruin, Catherine Ryan, Darren Ryan, Kate Ryan, Rachel Ryan, Ruby Ryan, Sophie Ryan, Patrick Salmon, Daniel Scanlon, Molly Sr., Neve Shanley, Emma Sharp, Sinead Shinners, Matthew Sparrow, Victoria Stepien, Dean Stritch, Jennifer Supple, Kirk Sutherland, Elizabeth Tewo, David Teig, Neve Timmon, Olivia Tobin, Laura Toner, Shane Tui, Darren Torpy, Lucas Tracy, Matthew Troy, Mariah Tyner, Rachel Tyrrell, Amy Vahi, Donna Vuma, Ruth Walker, Dean Walsh, Lydia Walsh, Lily Weber, Chelsea Whelan, Katie Whelan, Ashling Williams Maloney, Tara Woods, Shane Wynn. I now call upon our newest graduate from the faculty, Ms. Donna Vuma, to say a few words to her peers in the graduating class of 2021. Dear graduates, dear parents and families, dear professors, how proud I am to be standing in front of you today. Proud not solely because of the fact that I've completed my studies at this amazing university but because myself and fellow Sanctuary Scholarship recipients have managed to do so while facing almost impossible challenges that include, amongst other things, being international protection applicants. I remember that four years ago, I was also invited to make a speech on World Refugee Day on the occasion of the launch of the University of Limerick as a University of Sanctuary. Four years ago, I had narrated some of the troubles that we international protection applicants face. On that day, I had stated that when asylum seekers come into Ireland, we do not have the right to work. We live on a mere income of 19 euro 10 cents per week. We do not have access to higher education. In cases where we do, we are classified as international students, making us subject to high tuition fees. Meanwhile, we continue to live in a state of limbo, not knowing what is going to happen next. All challenges that I think we can all agree serve to make our lives more burdensome. And yet, even though these challenges presented themselves, here we stand today as graduates, as students, but more importantly, as fighters who managed to overcome. I do not say this as a testament to our individual abilities to overcome individual challenges, but as testament to our collective ability to stand together united in the face of shared challenges that have the potential to bring us down. How many times were we close to breaking point over the last four years? Almost too many to count. Yet we did not break. Because we were there for one another, and because we stood back up again every time that we were close to faltering. The University of Limerick staff and community support cannot be understated in this regard. 
dear university staff, when the world told us to get packing, when the world told us to give up, you encouraged us to do the exact opposite. It is a result of all your motivation, your support, that we are here today. Four years ago, I had stated that as the old Chinese proverb goes, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. I must say that as a result of your efforts, some of us have become extremely good fishermen. In other words, you've made us self-sustainable and future-proof. And for this reason, our achievements are not solely ours, but yours as well. Know that the greatest gift that we can give others is not monetary. It's not even tangible physical gifts, but access to opportunity to increase one's level of exposure. With us, you did just that. When society tried to disrobe us, you helped clothe us. When we were undignified, you gave us dignity. When all was doomed and lost for us, you gave us opportunities to prove ourselves. For this, we're truly indebted to your endeavors. To those listening to this speech, I would encourage you to follow the example of this great university and its staff. If you truly want to make a difference in the world, you do not have to be a rocket scientist to bring about change. Neither do you have to be a billionaire. All you have to be is a human being with a conscience, ready to help others move forward, to help the human race continue to move forward. That is precisely what the University of Limerick did with me, and it is precisely what it shall continue doing with other international protection applicants. As a proud alumnus of the University of Limerick, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing so. Thank you. I am now pleased to call on Professor Anne Ledworth, Executive Dean, Graduate and Professional Studies, to present the PhD candidates. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be awarded a doctoral degree by research and thesis. Therefore, I present the candidates to you and request you to confer the awards on them. Each doctoral candidate has successfully undertaken a programme of study and research involving the submission of a thesis and its examination by internal and external examiners. Doctor of Philosophy, Carmel Kirby. Carmel's thesis is titled, The Evolving Landscape of Local Governance in Ireland, Exploring the Potential to Create Public Value. Supervisors, Dr. Chris McInerney and Dr. Breed Quinn. Graduates, thank you for watching this online ceremony today, which I hope you enjoyed. On behalf of everyone at UL, I offer you our warmest congratulations to each and every one of you and wish you all every success in your future career path.